Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the episode, who, fuck, episode, it should be whatever, I don't know, hey, I know, alright, I know, I, I'm aware, I, I understand, I have the knowledge that you wish to impart on me already in my brain, I'm aware, I know, okay, I missed two weeks, <laughs> And I missed two fucking episodes of the Speared Sundays podcast. And you know why? You want to know why? Because I had better shit to do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I did it. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, I've just been very... I, I'm not going to lie. I've been stressed as fuck. Your boy's been stressed. The tour... Was coming up, uh, and uh, and you know what? I was like, I don't, I don't think I can be funny at the moment. Um, but I'm feeling good now. The shows have been going great. Thanks to everyone who's been coming out. I'm currently on tour at the moment. Uh, I'm going to Hobart tomorrow night. Uh, but by the time you listen to this, that will have been finished. I hope it went well. <laughs> I think it will. Uh, but next week, I'm going to Canberra and. Adelaide, I believe, and then Perth and fucking Sydney and all, all around the country. Uh, LouisSpears.com slash gigs if you want to get tickets. I'm going everywhere in Australia. It's going to be fucking sick. We just added a second Sydney show. Sydney sold out. We added a second one. We've added another Melbourne show. Uh, we're adding heaps of shows, but I think these these will be the last shows that we add. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, sorry about that, I did miss a couple episodes, I've just been, uh, fucking, I've been fucking stressed about every, all of the shows and making sure everything's ready, my material, all that kind of shit, and I was like, you know what, it's either I miss a couple of podcasts, or the shows are shit, <laughs> and I made my decision, and the shows were fucking great, um, man, I'm just looking through my notes, I, I, normally I look at my notes, and I'm like, oh, I'll talk about this first, I'll talk about that next, uh, but I haven't done that. Uh, so I'm looking at my notes now, fucking, dude, you know what I did? I went, before I went on tour, I went outfit shopping. You ever done that? You ever done outfit? Not just, not, not, oh, I need a new t-shirt. Nah. Nah, fuck that. Oh, I need some socks. Nah, man. Oh, I'm gonna buy some jeans. Nah, dude, outfit. <laughs> you ever done outfit shopping? That's next level, bro. Next level fucking coordinate outfit shopping. I was like, I'm going to fucking Chadston. And I haven't been to Chadston since the last time I was there. Which was when I bought a fucking beast, bro. Bro, you got a beast. I brought a fucking beast of a laptop. And before that, the last time I was there, I was some cunt took his fucking pants off in the food court for a photo with me and called me Liam. I still am disappointed in myself for even taking that photo. Anyway, I went to fucking Chadston, the fashion capital, to go outfit shopping. Not t-shirt shopping, alright? Oh, this is this is real life, man. Welcome to the fucking game. This is real life. Alright? All, all these fucking amateurs are going underwear shopping, hat shopping. I'm going to go for a browse. Nah, man. Outfit. <laughs> It's, you know what? You know what it is? It's like you... Here's the difference. Here's the difference between you and me, alright? Me, I'm a real motherfucker. I don't go shoe shopping. I go outfit shopping, alright? That's the difference. Here's the difference. When you go to the supermarket, what do you get? You get bread. I get groceries for the week. <laughs> you get a snack, I get a meal. That's the difference between you and me. Um, no, but I needed to figure out what I was going to wear on stage because um, as uh, as you guys... I need my fucking inhaler. Hang on. I, I'm going to be back, guys. I shouldn't do this, but I do. And, and every time I do it, I say that I'm not going to do it, but I do it every time. All right, I'm coming back. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm out of practice, and I'm out of fucking breath. But at least I'm not out of outfits. 
Yeah, so uh, what I like doing uh, before I do a tour, before I write a show, is I like to know what I'm fucking wearing, and I like I like having a uniform. So like every night, it's kind of the, it's the same thing. I have a little ritual. I jump up and down. I pace. I read through my notes. I'm wearing the same shit, so it's easier for me to visualize what I'm gonna do on stage. Um, so I went I went to Chatty to do outfit shopping, and it was fucking great, man. Like I I. I, I highly recommend you cunts do this because you can walk out with some cool shit, man. You know when you, you you know when you fucking buy like a t-shirt, you go out and you buy a t-shirt, and then you come home and you realize, oh, this doesn't go with anything that I have. You go outfit shopping, bro. You fucking piece together the the most exquisite fucking outfit that you own, for sure. So what I what I did is I, I went and I got some fucking I got some fucking jeans. I got some, I got a, I got a jacket from Zara that looks like I got it from fucking a really nice place, uh, but it was cheap as, uh, I got a t-shirt, oh no, I'm wearing my own merch, so I made my own t-shirt, and, uh, I, th and then I got some shoes, and hey, fucking sorted, and now I look sick, and don't you, all you can't, don't, oh, I thought you were on jeans money, hey bro, not my accountant, suck on my penis. Dude, I, I don't know what I'm doing in this podcast. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. And since last episode, right? When, when was that? Three years ago. Since last episode, I've been getting so many fucking comments, so many fucking messages. Ooh, if you hate Apple that much, stop buying it. Ah, so you shouldn't have bought a MacBook. You should have got a fucking HP yoga laptop that bends all the way around. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, all you, all you cunts with your Android phones and your fucking PC laptops. Hey, man. Hey. Hey. Hey, open up any social media app, any one of them, all right, on your Android phone. Open up any social media app. Open up Instagram. Open up Snapchat. Open up Facebook. And then, on your Android phone... From Instagram stories, I want you to scroll to the selfie section and just take a selfie for me. Huh? Take a selfie on your Android phone and then have a look at it. Look how fucking pixelated that shit is. There's no way I'm getting a fucking Android phone when every single cunt with an Android phone who takes a selfie looks like they took it in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then they transported it to the present. Fuck you and your fucking Android phones, all right? I don't care. Oh, they're cheaper. So? Look at your selfie, man. Take a look in the fucking selfie camera and tell me that an Android's better than an iPhone. Yes, iPhone sucks. Apple sucks. They're overpriced. They fucking break. And, they, and they're shit. But you know what? Here's the thing. Every single social media app in the world and every single fucking app is designed to work on an iPhone because every fucking iPhone has the same operating system and it just works. And if you're a dumb cunt like me who doesn't understand technology, can't install fucking antivirus, can't do anything correctly, an Apple computer and an Apple phone, as shit as it is, just fucking works. So you can come at me with, Oh, my Android phone does this. Oh, yeah? Cool. Take a selfie, bro. <laughs> Take a selfie and let me know when you finish counting how many pixels in it. Because I guarantee you're not going to get past nine. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, oh, oh, you know what it is? It's like, no matter how good the actual camera is on the Android phone, I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of comments. Oh, but the Android camera on this fucking phone is better than the iPhone. Yeah, that doesn't matter, man, because the software that connects the camera to Instagram isn't as good. It's not as good. And it doesn't matter how good your fucking lens is, your dumb Android phone doesn't talk to Instagram and Facebook better than an iPhone does. So, sorry, you look like shit in all your selfies. And it doesn't matter if you save $300 over me, you look like you wasted $300 on your plastic surgery and it fucked up giving your face a whole bunch of squares. Because you're pixelated. 
And it doesn't matter how much money you saved on your phone, you're pixelated. So come at me when you're not looking like a fucking 8-bit character in your selfies, alright? Sorry, yes, I spend way too much money on a fucking phone, but at least I don't look like Spongebob from Minecraft. <laughs> at least I don't look like a fucking Roblox character in my selfies, man. Are huh, you looking like Kanye West and Lil Pump every time you post something up on the gram? You're looking pixelated, bro. I don't care how savvy you are with your wallet or if your phone comes with a fucking stylus. You are made up of a bunch of squares, you fucking nerd. So there's my counter-argument. Until I see a selfie taken on the app and don't, don't be like, oh, but you can just take a photo and then upload it to Instagram. Nah, man, not doing that. That's going to waste half a second. I don't have time for that. I'm a busy man. And a busy man doesn't have time to be fucking pixelated. And another thing, all right? I've already got a fucking Mac. If I get an Android phone, I used to have... And don't believe me, I used to be one of these Android cunts. I'm converted. The only people more annoying than iPhone cunts is Android nerds. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many more fucking features your green text machine has. You're not using them. It's a fucking Facebook and Instagram machine. I'm going to pick whichever one does it the best. And at the moment, it's Apple. And if you disagree, hey... You're made up of a bunch of squares. <laughs> you know what? You know what made me fucking... Have you ever seen... Uh, you ever seen H3H3 H3 Productions? And this is not a diss to them. I fucking love them. I love their, their videos. I love their podcast. But have you ever seen Ethan post a selfie on his Instagram stories from his fucking Google Pixel phone that was supposed to have an amazing camera? It looks like he's taking it with an Xbox. <laughs> and an Xbox doesn't even have a fucking camera. Not an Xbox, not even an Xbox 360. Like an, an Xbox. The original. You know when the controller was way too fucking big? It looks like he's taken the selfie with the way too big Xbox controller. And it doesn't matter how good his fucking camera is, every time he posts a story, it looks like he uploaded it on the dial-up and he took the photo with a big Xbox original controller. So, sorry, not getting a fucking Android. You know what shits me though? Now that I'm done bashing Androids, fuck Apple, alright? Fuck iPhone. I knew, I knew I should have waited. I knew I should have fucking waited. You know what? It was my girlfriend. My girlfriend was like, you need a new phone. It doesn't work. It's broken. I was like, I want to wait until September when they fucking announce new iPhones. Because I think I need the big one because my hands are so fucking big, alright? I get the big condoms, I need the big phone. That's how it works. That's how it fucking works. There's a correlation, all right? But she was like, no, you need it now. You need it now. And I was like, all right, I'll get it now. Maybe I don't need the big one. Spent fucking... How much money did I spend? I spent $2,000 on a phone. Holy fuck. I can't, remember. I can't believe I spent two grand on a fucking phone. Hey, at least I'm not pixelated. At least I'm not made up of a bunch of squares. I mean, fuck it, I'd rather spend 10 grand than look like fucking Spongebob from Minecraft. Or a Minecraft version of Spongebob. I don't think he's from Minecraft. But anyway, I'm like, oh, maybe I don't need it. So I get the fucking, I get the regular sized iPhone XNXX, right? I get that, and uh, it's too small. It's fucking too small for my hands. My hands are so big that it's too small. My, my fucking, I, I, my, it overlaps. Like, you know when you hold your phone and it, like, sits nicely on the ends of your fingers? Mine, my phone sits in the middle of my fucking long ET fingers. It's fucked. The big one was great, but I got the small one. And then, of course, fucking, what was it? Like, maybe, I don't think it was even a month after I bought the new phone, they announced big ones. And I was like, well, fuck me. 
But you know what? I bet. I haven't even looked at the prices. I fuck. See, look how I hold my phone. It Like, look at that shit. Look at my fingers. Normal cunts, I see them. They hold it like this. I hold it like this. It wraps over the fucking screen. Very visual joke for all you audio listeners at home. But that's all right because you'll be able to see that on the YouTube version because I'm not filming this with an Android phone so it's not pixelated to hell and back. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want the big phone, man. But I'm not going to fucking... You know what I should do? I should... Oh, I should break this. I should fucking... I should break this and get them to replace it and then buy the fucking big one. Get my money back. I won't do that. Too much of a risk. I've already gotten one phone for fucking free. I didn't do it on purpose. <clears throat> uh, what else do I want to talk about today? Oh, I can't wait for all the fucking emails from these retarded fucking Android cunts. And you know what? You know what gets me, man? The whole... At le- you know what? I've been on both teams. I've had the Android phone. I've had the iPhone phone. The iPhone phone. I've had the Android phone. I've had the iPhone. I've had two phones. I've had it all. Most of these fucking Android cunts, all right? <laughs> hey, it's fine if you can't afford a fucking iPhone. It's fine. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, you know, an iPhone is a reasonable price. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, if you can't afford an iPhone, it's fine. You don't have to get angry at people who can. <laughs> oh, man. I already know I'm making so many fucking cunts angry. Hey, man, how is it listening to this podcast when you can't even listen on the podcast app, which is built for podcasts? How do you listen to podcasts, man? Did you have to download a third-party app that sucks? <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Com- you know what it is? Every cunt who's fucking listening to this with an Android phone has to watch it on YouTube like a peasant or download some shit third party fucking app that has ads on it like Stitcher or some shit thing like that. I don't know why I'm alienating like fucking 30% of my audience, but hey man, I love you, alright? It's fine. I mean, you look ugly as fuck in those pixelated selfies. And I know it's more difficult to listen to my podcast and have the latest version of any app. Oh, man. Uh, Hey, here's here's a a great conversation. When the new app, like a brand new app comes out, revolutionizes everything. And I've been in these shoes, right? Like when Snapchat came out, Oh, dude, you're gonna get this new app. You're gonna get Snapchat, man. It's fucking great. Millions and millions of people are on it. You gotta download it. Oh, sweet. I'll, I'll get up the Google Play Store and. Oh, I, it's not out yet. Yeah, it is, man. It is. Oh, it's not out. Oh, oh, that's right. It's only out for Apple users. <laughs> hey, man. You know what it is? The only argument that Android cunts have is, ah, oh, yeah, but Apple's like, for sheep. <laughs> Apple is for, is for sheep, man. I'm different. Hey, man, you know who else was different? People in wheelchairs. <laughs> People in wheelchairs are very different, man. (laughs) You know who else is different? You know who else is different, man? People with pixelated fucking selfies. They're very different. Ah, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop until I think of something else to say. How long are we going for? Oh no, I've been yelling about Android phones for 20 minutes. At least I don't actually own a fucking Android. <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk. Speaking of H3H3, can you can everyone fucking back off those people? Um I don't I don't understand the fucking hate towards H3 Productions. You know what it is? It's fucking... I I feel like we've reached 
a, a point, and I cop this. I cop this backlash too. I feel like we've we've reached a point with the internet where there's so much fucking content coming out every single day, and there's so much shit that's out there that it's almost like people who watch and consume. And I'm I'm one of these people, of course. I'm a consumer. I I love watching stuff. Um. It's almost like people cons- who are who are consuming feel like it, like like the people making it owe them, owe them shit. Whereas I'm kind of like, hey man, once you've watched something that I've made, that's done. That's a mutually beneficial fucking transaction. I made a thing, you enjoyed a thing. Done. Complete. Finished. Over. You don't owe me anything. Alright? I don't owe you anything. We're even. That's a that's a that's a symbiotic relationship. I made something, you enjoyed something. For free. It cost me money to make it. Money and effort to make it. But hey, hopefully I'll make that back because you watched it. Done. Mutually beneficial transaction. But I feel like a lot of people, especially online people who like get big, so like H3 have, it's like when they get big, it's like their audience are like, oh, you fucking owe us. You owe us. You got to keep uploading every fucking week for the rest of your life. Otherwise, you suck. And it's like, nah, man. I don't buy that, and and it's okay. So from what I can see, is H3 Productions are getting shit because of their app, right? Their new game that they uploaded. Um, they hadn't uploaded on their main channel for I don't know, like eight months or something. I don't know the exact, a long time, right? They hadn't uploaded a video on their main channel for a long time, but they were doing a fucking huge podcast like twice a week or something stupid for longer than eight months so it's like people it's like that but then they upload this fucking video to promote their app their game which was free you didn't have to buy it it was free and people got fucking angry at them because they hadn't uploaded on that channel for a while and then they were trying to give away something for free and yes they would have made money out of it but a lot of people would have enjoyed the game. Mutually beneficial transaction. No one is owed anything. Or at least that's how I view it. And am I fucking crazy? It's like... I don't know. It's it's like fucking... I don't know, it's just like this fucking entitled thing where... People are like, oh... I know you've been doing fucking hour-long minimum podcasts with really interesting guests twice a week for eight months, but you didn't make this kind of content that I want, so fuck you. I don't know, it makes it... You know what it it does? It makes me fucking go, oh, well, if I ever get sick of the main thing that I'm doing... I'm not saying they're sick of it. I'm just saying that, you know, if I ever fall in love with a new fucking project, uh, a cunt's gonna hate me if I'm like, oh, I just like this better. You know what I mean? And I get that a little bit too, because obviously stand-up comedy is my number one thing. That's all I care about. Stand-up is my fucking thing. I love stand-up, and, uh... That comes first in all things. And occasionally, my YouTube channel suffers for it. And it's like this weird fucking balance that I have to... That I have to juggle with where I need to make videos on the main channel so I can sell tickets. Uh, But I like performing more. But if I'm not doing this other thing, which I do love, don't get me wrong, I fucking love it, but I love stand-up more... And I feel like this year, I've copped a little bit of that because I haven't been very consistent on my main channel. I mean, I have for the last two months, but really before that, it's been fucking up and down, not very good. 
Uh, I've been uploading videos, but not consistently at all. But I haven't worked less. If anything, I've worked harder than I ever have because I put out a comedy special. I've done a radio show, which is new. Uh, and I'm writing this show. And, you know, sometimes you get I, I get fucking comments of like, Oh, when are you going to fucking upload a video, man? You're slacking off. And it's like, nah, dude, you're just not looking where my content is. I don't know. Am I crazy? Like, some comments will be like, Oh, you haven't fucking done anything. It's like, dude, yeah, I did a fucking comedy special and a tour. Some guy was like, man, you haven't done anything new. It's like, yeah, I have, dude. I just haven't really done it on my main channel. It's like, you're just not looking where I'm putting it. And I feel like maybe H3 have copped that a little bit too. But I don't, I don't get it. I don't think it's deserved. It's like, you know what it is? It's like, people online, they forget so fucking fast. That's what it is, because so much new shit is coming out every fucking day, and there's always a new YouTuber, and there's always new drama, and there's always this, and there's always that. And it's like, people forget so quickly. And it's not like, you know, I mean, I forget. I don't expect people to fucking, oh, fuck you, remember what I did back in 2012? I'm not going to be one of those cunts, but it's like, I don't know. I just felt like it was unfair, the backlash that they're getting. And then, and then you know, they make a video, and they and they say, oh... The reason why I haven't fucking been uploading on my main channel is because uh, I've been struggling with depression. And it's like, well, there you go. There's your fucking answer. And that's perfectly reasonable. I feel like with this whole <clears throat> new culture of, of YouTube and having to create shit minimum once a week, really, you got it. You kind of have to do it twice a week now to keep up with everyone else. Uh, it's like if you take a break for whatever reason, mental health, stress, or just feeling like a break, any reason to work on a big project like I did, I had to take a break to focus on my comedy special, you know, my my main passion, it's like, oh, oh, you fucking, you, you don't care about us, you've changed, or you suck now, and it's like, nah, I'm just working over here. It's like people especially with the channels thing, like, I feel like especially with them, it's like, people got angry at them, oh, you haven't uploaded anything on your, on your main channel, and then you upload this fucking, uh, ad for a game, and it's like, well, I, I've, I, I view them as people, not channels, right? I mean, I saw that, and I was like, oh, cool, another thing from Ethan and Ela, whereas other cunts were like, oh, you haven't put anything on this channel, it's like, yeah, but them as people have been fucking working their ass off. Sorry, right, stop recording there for a second. I really need to fix this camera. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's it's interesting seeing that kind of shit. And yeah, I guess I guess it, I I don't know. Maybe I just sympathise with them because I've also copped that a little bit. No, nowhere near as bad because I, I mean, I have I didn't disappear for eight months. But it, but it, but it's like they didn't disappear. People going, oh, you didn't fucking upload for eight months. It's like yeah, they did. They were just uploading this other project. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I don't, I don't agree with the backlash that they've gotten. <clears throat> I think the, the main fucking backlash they've gotten is just from cunts who just don't like podcasts in general. It's like, no matter how good theirs is, I think I already said this. I can't remember if I said it or it cut off, but it's like, no matter how good theirs is, it's still a podcast. So they just wouldn't enjoy it. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Whatever. Point is, uh, shout out to uh, H3. I think they're great. And I think that the, the backlash they're copping is just from fucking entitled cunts. Just selfish entitled cunts. It's like, dude, they're making it for free. And it's like, yeah, they're making money out of it, but it's not coming out of your pocket. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Well, maybe it's not a fucking, I don't know. Maybe, you know what? Maybe it's not a mutually... Actually, you know, fuck that. It is, it's a mutually beneficial thing. That's how I view it anyway. I made a thing. You enjoyed a thing. It's done. This fucking thing keeps... Fucking up. <clears throat> and for, for me, anyway, I feel like every, every perceivable way that I can make money or I've allowed myself to make money 
I've tried to make sure that it's like a fair transaction. Like I don't... Like if I make money out of YouTube ads, the people watching it are being entertained. If I sell a t-shirt, the people buying a t-shirt get a t-shirt. You know what I mean? Like it's like everyone gets something. I, I've been very cautious to make sure that every way that I make money, like if I sell a ticket, the person buying the ticket gets a fucking awesome show and gets to meet me and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are a lot of cunts out there that, that make money out of stuff that's like a one-way thing. But I feel like for myself and and definitely for H3, it seems to be mutually beneficial. But hey, I don't know. I don't know what I'm fucking talking about. It just, it just, you know, it just fucking annoyed me. I feel like this, this entitlement is new and it's really happening a lot and it's just fucking, I swear to God, I'm going to, if that turns off again, I'm going to fucking, I, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I was saying, I think this entitlement is like, it's new. Like I haven't really seen it before and it's because like we're in this like, I suppose, fairly late stage of YouTube and, and people blowing up and and like it's def like everyone understands that YouTubers, if they're big, can make a lot of money. And I feel like I feel like there's this general sense of, oh, we made you. Like this entitlement thing that I don't that I don't like. But hey, end of the day, fucking if you got if you got that many fucking subscribers, there's gonna be at least a hundred thousand cunts. You know what I mean? Um I don't know. I don't there's not no real end to this. Just that um hey man fucking thing. Sorry guys. Um I guess what I'm saying is it's very, very hard to make shit uh regularly and stay on top like they have. Um and every cunt needs a fucking break, you know? Um, and I feel like, hey, maybe we should just change people's perception about entertainers. It's like, I feel like, yes, without the fans, there would be no famous person with lots of money. But without the artist, there would be no art to enjoy. You know what I mean? It's a mutually beneficial transaction. In my eyes, anyway. And there are definitely ways that people can scam and rip off their fans, and then, then it's one way. But I feel like... I don't know. If you're angry at, at fucking H3, wrong people to be angry about. There's a lot of fucking shady cunts out there. <clears throat> and, um... I don't know why you would be angry at people releasing a game that's free. Oh, but they make money out of it. Yeah. It's also free. And you don't have to download it. Alright. That's what I wanted to say. I don't even know why I brought that shit up. Because it annoyed me. You know what's fucking weird? You know what's, what, what, what's fucking... Com that, that's eternally confusing to me? Fucking Ronda Rousey in the WWE. You know she's like... Ronda Rousey went from being like the best female fighter in the UFC to someone who pretends to fight. I mean, good on her. Mate, mate, get it, get your money. But isn't that weird? Don't you think that's fucking weird that someone's gone from like actually doing the thing and being really good at it, one of the best in the world for her time, and then going to pretending to do it? Is there any other is there any other fucking industry where where you can go from actually doing it to pretending to do it, doing it and then probably making more money? I would suspect that she might be making more money out of the WWE just because it's more regular. Like with a fight, you might have like I don't know, 3, maybe 4 a year. You can't have too many or you'll have no brain left. But with WWE, it's all pretend so you show up every fucking week and pretend to bash cunts, right? Wouldn't she make more money, especially considering she's such a big brand? And and WWE, I believe, excuse my ignorance, is bigger than the UFC. <clears throat> I would think they have more money just from merch and all that kind of shit. Um but isn't that weird? Is there is there any I'm just I've been trying to think like all fucking week, is there any other bit industry or business where you can go from being one of the best at actually doing it to being someone who pretends to do it. 
Like, comedy, you can't pretend to do comedy. Cooking, you can't pretend to make food. I think fighting is the only thing that you can actually do that with. Like, I don't know, there's no, like, not even with music. Like, you can't pretend to make music because there would be... I don't know, it's really interesting to me. It fucking trips me out. Every time she... You know what's funny? Well, all these WWE... Because everyone knows that it's fake, right? Everyone knows. And that's part of the appeal. Like, I love watching WWE just because, like, the athleticism and the gymnast and, and the acting is over the top. And that's, like, the whole thing. But what's funny to me is, is like, all of those people in the WWE, in that wrestling thing, wh- when they post on Instagram, like, when they win a fight, a scripted fake fight that they knew they were going to win... And then they, like, post a, a photo of them on Instagram with the belt being like, Yeah, I did it. I worked so hard for this. And it's like, no, you no, you didn't. You, I mean, someone else wrote that. You didn't work hard. I mean, it was, it was like, hard to do. But you didn't, you had no say in whether you were going to win or not. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I worked so hard to be here. It's like. Kind of not really, man. You work so hard to get into the WWE, and then once you're in, I mean, that's it. You don't, you don't make any choices. <laughs> I don't know. It's very fucking confusing. This is what happens when I don't do a podcast for a while. I get out of practice, and I just fucking ramble. Um, so I'm just having a bit of fucking juice here. What have I got in my notes here? Um... Oh, Louis C.K.'s back from comedy. A lot of people have been asking me about what I think about Louis C.K. Um, my overall thoughts are what he did was fucked and how he came back was stupid. I, I don't think that he should not have come back, but I think how he came back was stupid. So if, you, if you're not aware, Louis C.K. pulled his dick out to a bunch of uh, female comedians and... and probably some people who weren't comedians as well. Uh, And then he got exposed for it, and then he admitted to all of it. He didn't deny any of it. He said, all of it is true. I'm very sorry. I'm going to have a break to think about it. Uh, Eight months later, he did a a surprise gig, which is ironic. (laughs) Uh, He did an unannounced surprise spot at the Comedy Cellar, which is like, uh, I think it's like a hundred and something, very small, uh, in a basement. Which So, surprise set in a basement, that's fucking ironic as hell. Um, and he did not address anything in his set. He just did like a normal Louis C.K. set. He walked on to a standing ovation, which I think is weird. Not because of what he did, just because I think it's fucking weird to walk on stage to a standing ovation, because how the fuck are you going to top that as a comedian? Uh, that's I've always thought that was weird. Like I saw Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, sorry about that, guys. The, the this Sorry if this podcast is, is fucking jumpy and shit. This camera keeps stopping on me. I think I need a... I need to upgrade the camera, but the fucking thing is, the th- this camera that I'm using is like a shitty four hundred dollar crap camera that just records for ages and has like professional sound inputs for this microphone. But like the next step up from this is like I don't know the cheapest I can find is two thousand dollars, and I just can't fucking afford that at all. But this shit is killing me. I don't know what to do. Actually, if, if any of you, if any of you guys are camera nerds, can you send me a recommendation for like something that I that I could get that might be cheaper than that? Like, I need what I need is a, a camera that can film obviously for like two hours in one take and has uh, audio inputs for um, like microphone cables um, because this I don't know this thing. It's just it just keeps stopping in the middle of. And it's shitting me. I don't know. If you have any recommendations, send me an email at podcast at lewispears.com. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, Louis C.K. Um, I think... Yeah, I think... Here's the thing. Like, first, here's how he should have come back, right? This is what he, sh- he should have waited. He, this is where he fucked up. He should have waited at least a year, all right? Four more months, not going to kill you. Should have waited a year. Just because a year sounds like so long. He should have waited a year. Um, He shouldn't have done a surprise set. 
And I, I, this, this is me like, this is not because like I think he shouldn't have done this. This is how to avoid the outrage mob, by the way. I think he can come back, whatever. But this is how I would have done it to avoid the outrage mob. I would have waited a year. I would have not done a surprise set, but I wouldn't have announced it online because that's how you get protesters. I would have told the comedy club, hey, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes. Tell everyone so that everyone in the audience is aware and people can leave if they really want to. And then I would get on, I'd do fucking 10 minutes, and I would address it. Write a joke, say something serious, whatever. Address it in some way, shape, or form, and make that fucking address so specific that your words couldn't be twisted by getting... Like, you'd have to plan that fucking paragraph that you would say about the thing so that it couldn't be taken out of context. Uh, and then and then maybe release another apology saying, I'm sorry, I think I've learned a lot and I'm ready to move on. Is there anything I can do to help the the people I've affected? That's how I would do it. But you know what? Even then, I, I feel like with if you did all of that shit, it wouldn't be enough. Because it's never fucking enough. That's the thing. I think that what Louis did was horrible, reprehensible, should never, ever be done to anyone under any circumstances. But I also think everyone can change. Everyone deserves a second chance. Everyone can do better. And I feel like this whole culture of fucking vilifying someone and and always saying it's not enough it's not enough how could he come back it's it's like what do you what do you want because like sure fair enough get angry at how he came back but don't just fucking scream and tweet without any solution you know what i mean like no solution all all you see nowadays is fucking anger it's like oh fuck him how could he come back and blah 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 and all this kind of stuff, but all these people, n- none of them are saying, well, here's how Louis could, you know, come back in a respectful way. Here's what he could have done. It's just fucking, oh, anger. Straight up anger and, and like condemning the dude, which he should be condemned, but I don't think his life should be fucking ruined. And I feel like you can feel sorry for the victims and you can look after the victims and you can make sure that the guy who did it doesn't do it again in a compassionate way. You know what I mean? Because if you just fucking scream at someone and you abuse them and you try and destroy their life, either either they're just going to be like, well, fuck the world, I'm not going to learn anything and I'm going to go out there with a vengeance and I'm going to keep doing this shit because it doesn't matter if I change or if I apologize, nothing is enough, so why should I learn and change my behavior? That That's going to happen. Or you're just going to keep punching and destroying and tearing down until that person becomes nothing and there's no way out and they kill themselves. That's kind of like... That's the end of those two paths. You know what I mean? It's either they become a monster... Or they fucking get their lives destroyed permanently and they can't do their passion and they get depressed and they kill themselves. You know what I mean? That's where... I mean, obviously it's unlikely for it to go that far, but that's where those two paths lead. Whereas we could pick the other one, which is more difficult, and try and educate and uplift and forgive. Um... And I feel like we can do that without that being disrespectful to the victims. Especially considering it it wasn't like fucking full on. You know what I mean? Or you leave it up to the authorities and just believe whatever they fucking do. But I guess, you know, that doesn't always turn out well for victims as well. So, hey, what do I know, man? I don't know anything. I'm just some cunt with a fucking podcast and a camera that keeps turning off. And an iPhone, so at least I look good in my selfies. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, with that uh, jumpy fucking shit out of the way, sorry about that. I'm going to get into miscellaneous bit at the end. I'm not sure if I have fucking any questions this week, actually, because I haven't done it for a little bit. Um... Where are we? 
Oh, that's right. So, last episode, we had someone email in saying they were going to... Well, getting... Kind of getting me to propose... Or help... Getting me to help them propose. So, there was a, there was a couple who really liked my podcast and, and the guy sent me an email to read out and it was like a proposal. Uh, that guy got back to me and I'm going to post this in the photo in the Speared Sundays podcast group for everyone to see. Uh, she said yes. And uh, they sent me a lovely photo of, of the female's hand uh, with a ring on. And that's really cute. So we got our first ever official fucking marriage on the podcast. It was during miscellaneous bit at the end. So, hey, I think this one's not going to work out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, that's that's lovely, guys. Congratulations. I'm really happy for you. And I, I, I hope it all works out and you can, um, you know, build a nice little fucking... St- speared families and you have the shittest marriage ever that'd be fucking great i hope you guys have a a truly romantic shit one uh that's really cool and i'll post the photo in there the guy the guy said he got really nervous and he and he forgot to film it uh which is fine um but yeah that's that's cool thanks for sending the photo and 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 i'm on it i don't know i don't know how to how to fucking think uh about it I, i guess it's cool i guess it's cool to be part of to be part of that i get it's a huge part of your lives now and uh uh You know what's funny? You know how much pressure that puts on me to, like, make it? Like, like, full-on A-list? I have to make it now. I fucking have to... I have to full-on A-plus, like, Jim... I gotta Jim Carrey make it. You know what I mean? Because you can't have... Like, 20 years down the line, you can't have this conversation. So, uh, how did you propose to mum? And then you go, well... Uh, there was this comedian who uh, never made it and he's not famous and he works at a supermarket now. Uh, but at the time, he showed a little bit of potential and I quite enjoyed his podcast. Uh, does he still do the podcast? No, he, um, he never made it and he lives in a supermarket. But at the time, he showed, qu- <laughs> he showed quite a lot of potential so I thought it would be nice for me to propose to your mother uh, using his podcast. Oh, can can we listen to it? No, he took it down um, because podcasting, to keep a podcast running, uh, it costs money and he never made it and he works in a supermarket. So he had to take it all down. So it's gone forever. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Is that why? Is that why you and you and Mum got divorced? <laughs> yeah. Now I have to fucking make it because you can't have that conversation. You want to be like, oh, how did you propose to Mum? Well, do you know Lewis Spears? What? No way. He's so famous. You actually got him to read. Like that's how it needs to go now. It can't be like, who's that? He works in a supermarket. I got to fucking. I got to hustle, dude. That's really lit a fire under my ass. Um. Also, we got a, another update. I don't have any questions. If you want to send a question into the podcast, uh, email podcast at lewspears.com if you need some life advice or if you have a cool story or anything you think I would like. Uh, summarize it in the subject line and I'll get back to you and keep you anonymous if you want to. Uh, podcast at lewspears.com. I got one update and uh, I think then we'll wrap it up. So this one is f- from... Oh, I can't remember. Did, did this chick want me to say a fucking name? Alex. <clears throat> All right. No. Sophie. Okay. Uh, Sophie uh, emailed in, I think it might have been last episode, I can't remember, and she emailed in and she said that she was a loser and she had no friends uh, and she wanted to know how to make them and, of course, she came to the expert who, of being a fucking loser. Um, and I basically told her, short recap, she said she only has two friends and she doesn't really connect with them, hasn't done that much, uh, she's happy with she is who with who she is uh, as a person, um, but she was worried about her being a virgin. She's 18 years old, and uh, she didn't really know how to make new friends. And I basically told her, "Hey, it sounds like you're waiting for shit to happen to you. That'll never happen to you. No one ever goes. I'm gonna make you my friend." I told her to go out there and do shit. Uh, I basically said, this is a realization that I came to when I was 18, when I was going through kind of the same stuff, is I thought I was a loser, but I realized that looking back on it, nah, I wasn't at all. I was just like a regular person. I just wasn't cool. 
I wasn't like a, I didn't have heaps of friends. I just had like a, a regular amount, which was, you know, two or three or four friends, which is fucking normal. But when you're in high school, it's like, oh, I've only got two, two friends. I'm a loser. And you, you're not. When you leave high school, you're lucky if you got two mates. Um, so I kind of gave us some perspective on it. And I said that people don't make friends. No one ever looks at someone and goes, you're my friend. You make friends by doing shit together. You, you have a mutual interest. You do this, you do that. You bond over an activity. You don't just make friends out of fucking thin air. Anyway, uh, she sent an update. She said, I can't remember if I've read this actually. It's sounding familiar. I know I've read it, but I can't remember if I've read it on the podcast or not. Oh, well. She said, uh, hi, Lewis. Thanks so much for replying to my email. It left me so hype. It left me so hyped all week. It's been amazing. That's great. Everything you said made perfect sense to me, which I haven't been able to receive from anyone else. That's nice. Uh, it might be the fact that it came from you. I think you're fucking amazing. Thank you. Stop sucking my dick. Uh, <laughs> or the fact that I found someone who can relate to my situation. I think in the past, what has put me off joining groups was the idea of having to talk to new people, which obviously doesn't work. Uh, if you want to make friends. I now know that I need to just suck it up, go join something and talk to people who follow the same interests as me. I vowed to become more of a social person after my last exam on November 20th. Um, uh, anyway, thank you for responding to my email. Uh, if you've been able to change yourself from a loser to a cyberbully superstar, I'm sure I'm capable of making a few good friends. Uh, I'll email you sometime next year with how it's all going. Um, Hopefully around March, so I can re so I can also remind you to remind us to vote for you in the podcast re uh, awards. Thanks for making me last laugh. Have a shit one, Sophie. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, that was a fucking sorry, guys. That was a very boring update for everyone else. It, it just were everything everything worked out in the end. But I'm <laughs> I'm happy for you, Sophie. That's really cool. And uh, yeah, you're totally right. You just need to suck it up and just be more social. Uh, and it's and you know what it is. Being, what I learned is being social is a fucking skill. And, and that's what I've learned from really pushing myself. Because I'm a fucking introvert. I don't like... I or Well, I, I don't... It's not that I don't like talking to people. It's just I need to rest after I talk. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it, like when I do a show and I perform and then I meet like fucking a couple hundred people in the space of three hours. The next two days... I need to not talk to other people. Like, not even my girlfriend. I need to be alone. Like, it's like I need to recover from the emotional energy. And I love it. I fucking love meeting everyone after shows and performing, of course. But uh, after that, I feel real drained. Um, and I just need to fucking retreat into myself for a little bit. Um, and, I, and I always felt that when I was younger, I'd like... I'd talk to one person and I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck. I feel drained. And then I, 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 I was like, oh, maybe I hate talking to people. And it's like, no, I'm just naturally more comfortable hanging out by myself and being by myself. But I need, I understand that I need to talk to people. You know what I mean? Like it's, I think it's definitely a skill. The amount that I fucking improved from 18 to now, just talking to people and strangers. Like now I could, I feel like I could comfortably walk up to a stranger and just start a conversation. Uh, whereas before, you know, when I was 18, that would have terrified me. So yeah, go be social, you fucking nerds. Um, all right, guys, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry it's been a bit jumpy. Um, I'm going to have a podcast with Greeley soon. Next week will be another solo one, but the week after that will be with Greeley. He's got the update to Spider Lad, which I've heard, and it's fucking hilarious. Uh, so expect that. Um, thank you for putting up with how jumpy this has been. If you have any camera suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Send me an email, podcast at loosebeers.com. And, oh my god, the fucking alarm's going off here. Either we're getting robbed, or... Oh my god. Alright guys, that's the end of the podcast. This might be the last podcast I ever do. We might be getting fucking raided and robbed. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks for listening, and uh, have a shit one. I'm on tour at the moment, loosebeers.com slash gigs to grab your tickets. I'm gonna go and see if I'm getting murdered. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, it's 9pm at night. I'm dead. See you later, guys. Thank you very much. Have a shit one.